This tutorial will show you how to make an expressive abstract mask using cardboard, Elmer's glue, and oil pastels. This artwork is a student favorite and it always creates the most fun and crazy results. Start with one large piece of cardboard and you're gonna cut from the four corners. So cutting from the corners makes it easier and it's safer with your scissors. You can always make your cardboard smaller as you cut in and in. Once you're happy with the size of the head, you can cut out smaller details along the edge to give it a little bit more emphasis. Organize and save all of your small pieces. You just might need them for teeth or eyelashes or layering of patterns. A sculpture is a three-dimensional work of art. This is not what to do. Instead, you want to layer using big, medium, and then small shapes to create a three-dimensional effect with your relief sculpture. Once you have your big pieces, experiment with layering medium to small pieces to create facial features that are abstract but still represent the facial feature you're trying to do. I'm using a larger piece and I'm cutting from my edge a large blob for my mouth. Doesn't look mouth-like yet, but I'm gonna start with my largest piece and then go from there. I do a combination of free form, just cutting with my scissors, and some shapes I know exactly what I want, so I'll draw it out. Notice I'm doing it on the edge of my cardboard. Symmetry is really tricky, so once you have a shape, if you need to repeat it, lay it down on another edge of your cardboard, trace it, and then you can cut out exactly symmetrical images, which is hard to do freehand. You'll notice I'm not gluing anything down yet. I know I want my mask to show an angry or furious or aggressive expression. And so I'm just playing around with how shapes can show emotion. Color is gonna be a big key that we'll talk about later, but I want the shape and organization of my mask to show this angry expression that has inspired my work today. I'm hoping all these small pointy triangular teeth make it look terrifying. My students have told me over and over again that it is really difficult to get in the cracks and crevices of your cardboard once everything is glued down. So we're gonna add color first. We are gonna do a gradient of dark to light and I start with black and then I'm gonna add blue, light blue, and white to give it this effect of it fading. Color is an excellent tool for showing expression in your art. I want my mask to look ferocious, but I don't need it to all be like bright red. So I'm doing a blue background so that all of my angry red and dark facial features really pop. The gradient is black, dark blue, light blue, and white, and it's gonna make my mask look really three-dimensional. Notice I took everything off before I added color. Here are some really creative ways to do a gradient that kind of mixes things up a little bit. You don't have to start dark from the outside um, and you can mix and blend colors that show whatever expression that you would like. And don't be afraid to level up and really go to town with your shading. Once I'm happy with my background blending, I start putting color in my largest shapes. I wanna pick a color that is very different or contrast from my blue background but I also want it to look furious, so I start with my dark color and create a gradient on that other shape. Once I've added my color, I like to experiment with overlapping my shapes in different ways. And you may have had something planned out to a T and then it changes as you add color and as you work on this for a few more sessions. I'm using a white pastel. Um, there is the option of using white acrylic or tempera paint um, kind of as a last way to do some touch-ups. The white, um, I overlap on top of a paper towel and I'm using a light blue to give it a shadow and to make it look more realistic. I think veins are super important, not only for realistic eyes, but I want my mask to look furious. 
I chose green in my eyes because it was different from the blue, but in the same color family. And I wanted it to be very different from the reddish kind of brown background the eye itself was gonna be resting on. The small pieces are really hard to add color to. So it may benefit you to glue down the tiny pieces like the last layer and color them after it's been glued. I just went ahead and did the black pupil on my paper towel. Um, and the trick again is symmetry. So I wanted my eyes to be the same on both sides. So I just repeated my steps. And before I glue anything down, just play around with how it's organized. Your nose should relate to the color of your face, but also stand out. And your nose is your longest vertical shape um, and it doesn't show as much expression necessarily as the eyes or mouth, but it's a very important facial feature nonetheless. The fun thing about this artwork is it's so abstract, I can really let loose with my colors. I can mix colors that you wouldn't normally see on a face, but also keep some things true to how it looks in real life. So it's a fun balance of abstract and being inspired by more natural facial features. I highly recommend looking at African art, specifically African masks, and of course, Pablo Picasso, the king of abstract art, who is really, really inspired by the African art that he saw. And there are so many different styles of African masks with really fun patterns, really bizarre facial features. Um, definitely something to look at as you're making a mask yourself. Adding pieces that stick off the edge or base of your mask is a great way to create interest and make your mask more eye-catching. Spikes, horns, hair, ears, whatever it is you want to add, add something and glue it from the back so it's really stable to make your mask look even better. Small details are really important. So think about patterns, think about small little pieces that you can glue down to create interest and break up your color scheme using a flash of a fun color or something different. This abstract expressive mask uses layering of cardboard, shading and blending with oil pastels and captures expression all while learning about Pablo Picasso and the many different styles of African masks. Students always impress me with their creativity, their ability to think outside of the box, and how they're able to use color and shape to create something that has so much expression. Be sure to subscribe so you're in the loop for my newest tutorials, and if you want student examples and a full in-depth lesson plan, visit me at thatartteacher.com.